Welcome back to Bio 6612. In this week's final lecture, we're going to discuss transformations of MLEs in the Delta method. So today we cover the invariance property of MLEs. So the invariance property of MLEs allows us to find the maximum likelihood estimator of transformations of an MLE. This property states that if theta hat is the MLE of theta, then any for any function tau of theta hat, that's the MLE of tau of theta. And this is a really useful property. I'm not going to go through the proof, but you can find it in Casella Burger. So an example of how to use this property is given on this slide. So suppose you have y1 to yn, n, which is a sample of independent variables um, that are normally distributed with mu. Um, mean with mean mu and variance sigma squared. The sample mean is mu hat um, equals y bar, and that's the MLE of mu for the normal distribution. So what if we wanted the MLE of 1 over mu? So using this invariance property, um, you can just plug in the 1 over mu hat or 1 over y bar, and that is the MLE of 1 over mu. So what if you calculate 1 over y bar or 1 over mu hat, and you also want to get a confidence interval around those values? Well, in order to do that, you would need the variance of that transformation of the estimator. Of the estimator. And you can do this using the delta method. And so under the delta method, method, you assume that your estimator theta hat has an asymptotically normal distribution. Luckily, as we saw in the previous two lectures, um, MLEs have an asymptotically normal distribution. Uh, so that assumption will ho hold. Additionally, if you're using y bar, as we are in this example, um, due to the central limit theorem, uh, we know that y bar has an asymptotically normal distribution. So then for a given function tau and a specific value of theta 0, uh, meaning the true value of theta, suppose that the first derivative of tau of theta 0 exists and is not equal to 0. The delta, me delta method states then that the transformation of the MLE tau of theta also has an asymptotically normal distribution with uh, variance given by the derivative of that tau theta squared times sigma squared, the variance of the original estimator before the transformation. And down here, so I have that written out what the asymptotic variance will be. And so I say the variance of tau of theta is approximately equal to this quantity rather than directly equal because this is an asymptotic variance. So that equality only holds in the limit when n goes to infinity. Otherwise, it approaches that value. So let's look at an example of the delta method. So let's take our earlier estimate um, of 1 over mu, 1 over y bar, where we had the y's coming from a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. And some, from central limit theorem, we know that y bar is asymptotically normal. And we also have sigma squared is the variance of y1. And the function that we're interested in um, is 1 over mu. And the derivative of that function is given by uh, negative 1 over mu squared. So then by the delta method, we have that the asymptotic variance of 1 over y bar is given by the derivative of tau of mu times sigma squared, which is equivalent to sigma squared divided by mu to the fourth. And we can check that this an answer actually works out using simulations. Um, but we're going to use um, our y's are coming from a normal distribution with um, mean 0.5 and variance. 1. We'll do this 100,000 times, and I'm going to store uh, the result of each time I do this in a vector 
what I call tau theta of hat to represent that this, we're looking um, at calculating the transformation um, tau of y bar. And for each of those trials, I'm going to have a sample size of n equals 100. First, I set the seed to ensure that every time I run this, I get the same results, even though I'm randomly selecting um, y values each time. And then I run a for loop that does this um, 100,000 times. Uh, it runs tr um, 100,000 trials, each of size 100. Um, in each trial, I randomly sample 100 values uh, from a normal distribution with mean of 0.5. Then I uh, take all the values from that sample, um, I calculate the mean, and then I take the one over the mean, which is, gives us our tau uh, of y bar, our estimated um, transformed y bar variable. And then I also calculate the variance of that transformed estimator um, using, this is the estimate for the variance coming from the delta method. So. If you run that code, then you get a mean um, value for one over y bar um, that estimated to be 2.09, which should be equal to one divided by 0.5 because we know that the true um, mean is 0.5 in our simulation example. Um, and so that's pretty close. So one over divided by 0.5 is equal to two. Our calculated mean of 2.09 is pretty close to two. And then our variance, which we calculate using the delta method here is 0.2445, and that should be roughly equal to the um, variance. And so the observed variance of that um, transformed estimator, which is 0.24 here, should be equal to the variance we calculated, or roughly equal to the variance we calculated using the delta method. It's 0.288, so it's not too far. It's like a little bit farther than I'd like. Um, but we only have a, a sample size of n equals 100, and we're still getting reasonably close to the, the theoretical values. So at the next slide, I look at the, all the distributions of the tau of thetas that we calculated in this simulation. And you can see, so the true value of tau of theta should be 1 over 0.5, which is equal to 2. And you are clumped, your values are clumped around there, but our distribution, uh, and then I've overlaid a normal line on top of this. Distribution isn't quite seem normal. It's it's not terrible, but it could be better. Um, and that could be due to the fact that we have a small sample size here. So I'm gonna run this simulation again with n equals 1000 and see what happens. So as you can see, after you run the simulation with n equals 1000, um, you get a much better result with a more normally distributed estimator. Um, and check for yourself, but also the hypothetical value for the variance of the transform estimator is closer to the true value. So thanks for listening. Um, that's it for lectures for week two.